Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and I love safety. I always wear my seatbelt. I will never ride a motorcycle. I wear a mask when I'm around other people. And I've sold two different shirts that remind you that in all you do, do it for safety purposes. Also, I brought these shirts back for a couple days, so if you wanna pick one up, the link's in the description below. Recently, I stumbled upon another video creator with a passion for safety, Brian David Gilbert. His video on Polygon about all of the OSHA violations that the Smash Bros stages have committed was mwah, a masterpiece. As are all of his videos, Brian, please be my friend. And while watching this, I realized that there's a lot of places in Pokemon that are also very unsafe. And I'm not really talking about routes since most of those are just the wilderness, which is inherently dangerous. I'm talking about man-made Pokemon locations, specifically Pokemon gyms. Today, I will be ranking every single main series Pokemon gym by how dangerous its gym puzzle is. I will be doing this on a scale of one to 10, with one being not dangerous, it's just a room, and 10 being participating would kill you. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, tap that bell for notifications, you know the thing. And let's dive in to ranking every single Pokemon gym by how unsafe it is. There are a few clarifications I have to make up front before we can dive into the specific rankings. The first is that I will be looking at these gyms through the lens of real world physics. Obviously, progressing through a gym puzzle in the games does not kill the player. Like, could you imagine if it did? But for this video, all features of the gym puzzles will be treated as if they existed in the real world and have the real world mechanics. So big tall ledges with no guardrails don't have invisible walls. You can fall off of them. Fire is not just a solid object, it can burn you and more stuff like that. However, and this is the second clarification, the real world physics don't extend to the Pokemon themselves. Pokemon are inherently dangerous. They're wild animals that can shoot laser beams. Anywhere a Pokemon battle occurs would then be dangerous, which would make every single gym dangerous. That would mean this video would be wildly uninteresting though, so we're not gonna worry about any dangers caused by the existence of Pokemon. We're looking at just the structures and nothing else. But now that I've cleared those things up, we can move on into the rankings and we'll start at the bottom, the gyms that are pretty safe. These are the gyms that I gave the rank of one the gyms that are no more dangerous than a room in your house. You would have to make a concerted effort to hurt yourself. I'm not gonna go over all of them since as you can see, there are quite a lot, but some notable examples are Brock's Pewter Gym, which is just a room with some rocks, Norman's Petalburg Gym, which is just several empty rooms, and Roxy's Verbank Gym, which is just a basement with a stage. Wait, actually, the basement only has one entrance and exit, and it doesn't appear to be clearly labeled with a glowing exit sign, so that's, God, that's gotta be a fire code violation. Oh my gosh, I have to increase its score. That's wildly unsafe. No, no, no. Brian David Gilbert already went through and did real world safety regulations and made it sound wildly unfun. So I'm not gonna worry about any OSHA regulations or fire codes or anything like that. I'm just looking at the inherent danger of the structures, not whether the building is up to code. After all, Every single gym only has one entrance and exit. Before I move on to the two ranked gyms though, there were a few one ranked ones that I wanted to talk about. Those that have technology that doesn't exist in the real world, specifically warp panels and spinny arrow tiles. To me, these technologies seem like they could be dangerous since a spinny arrow tile could send you careening into a wall or if a warp panel malfunctions, it could teleport part of you and only part of you. However, I've decided that these technologies cannot be considered dangerous because the technologies are widespread in the Pokemon world. Warp panels are all over Silphco, the headquarters of a famous and reputable organization. Aerotiles are in the Rocket Hideout, 
the headquarters of an infamous and disreputable organization. The technology seems to be as consistent and reliable as a well-built elevator, so I can't label these gyms as more dangerous just because they include a technology that's unfamiliar to me. A technology that seems to function perfectly. Next are the gyms I gave a score of two. These are places that are a bit more dangerous than a regular room, but you're extremely unlikely to get hurt if you use common sense. Some of these, like the Orberg and Black 2 White 2 Nimbasa gyms, have some ledges without guardrails you could fall off, but you wouldn't be severely injured if you did. Others, like the Four Tree or Diamond Pearl Veilstone gyms, have moving walls or parts that might pinch you if you're not careful, but wouldn't do serious harm. Others, like the Fuchsia, Duford, and Platinum Hard Home gyms, require you to navigate through mazes that you can't properly see. So you could bump into or trip over something, but that shouldn't be a problem if you just don't run. And then there's the Cerulean gym, which is just an indoor pool or a natatorium. Pools are by nature more dangerous than regular rooms, especially for those who cannot swim, but they're real world things that they let kids enter. The walkways in the Cerulean Gym might be more dangerous, especially if they get slippery, but there appear to be tons of lifeguard trained swimmers around. Although my ranking of two for the Cerulean Gym only applies to generations three and earlier, because starting in generation four, they let you run by the pool. Everyone who has ever been to a pool knows that there's no freaking running, okay? So generations four and seven Cerulean gym, these lax safety procedures are gonna get someone hurt. You're bumped up to a rank of three. Speaking of rank three, here are all the gyms that I designated with that number. These are places with a moderate chance of some mild harm like scrapes or bruises and a small chance of something more serious. The Gen 7 Cinnabar Gym uses indoor pyrotechnics, including miniature rockets firing off indoors. Blaine seems to have a good handle on them, but if they were to malfunction, which fireworks can do, someone could get really hurt. The Ecritique Gym features walking on a dark, narrow pathway you're almost certain to fall off of. Doing so seems to teleport you harmlessly back to the beginning, but unlike warp panels, you have vertical momentum when you teleport here, meaning when you arrive at the entrance, you're gonna fall down a little bit. It seems mostly safe, but you might roll an ankle. The Heartgold Soulsilver Seanwood Gym features cliffs you could fall down and exposed machinery, and the Platinum Veilstone Gym has punching bags wildly swinging around and knocking over tires. The Black 2 White 2 Gyms for Drift Vale and Humalau feature riding on objects that give you a lot of forward momentum, but bring you to a sudden stop, which would lead to some trips and falls. The Coomarine Gym is a tall exposed tower, but there are guardrails and nets, so it's not super dangerous. Finally, the Holbury Gym has exposed water you could fall into since there's no guardrails, which could cause a problem if the pipes make any weird currents or you can't swim well. Next are the gyms ranked at four. These are the ones where you are likely to get some scrapes and bruises and have a small chance of more moderate harm, like a broken bone. The Pastoria Gym has rapid changes in water level. While the buttons to activate the water level changes are always above the level you're on, what if someone else steps on it? The Diamond and Pearl Heart Home Gym requires you to ride open top elevators up tall, no guardrail edges. While you're unlikely to fall, doing so would really hurt. The Anastar Gym has narrow pathways you could easily fall off of, but doing so would make you fall onto some psychic sphere, which, I really have no idea whether that would hurt you or not. But at the very least, if you fell from one psychic walkway onto another, that would probably hurt. The Stow on Side Gym's insane teacup ride would almost certainly give you whiplash, not only from hitting the walls, but from being rapidly punched around in different directions with random speed. Finally, the Sir Chester Gym requires you to navigate with limited visibility and a minefield of pits you'd certainly be hurt falling into one of those. We're now at the midpoint, those ranked five. 
Participating in these means you either are likely to get some broken bones while participating, or you have a small chance of something more serious. Both the Heart Gold Soul Silver Azalea Gym and the Oris Moss Deep Gym have you riding over a pit with no visible bottom. While the technology of your transport appears reliable, there's no way to know what would happen if you fell into the darkness below. It could be a two feet drop onto a floor that's painted black, or it could be a pit leading to Tartarus and you spend your eternity in hell. So five, nice middle ground. The Mahogany Gym is an ice puzzle and no one likes ice puzzles, but I think we would like them a lot less in real life. You'd have to get a running start and then hop onto the ice. You could of course trip and fall, which would hurt, but even if you didn't, what eventually stops you is likely to be a wall or a rock. Any ice puzzle would be virtually guaranteed to hurt you at least pretty bad, but it could be potentially worse. Wear a helmet if you're not like a super experienced skater and even then I probably still would. The Castelia Gym in Black 2 and White 2 launches you through thin spiderweb shoots with no apparent slowing of momentum at the end, meaning in the real world, you'd smack into the floor every time. The Silage and Shalor gyms are both real life recreational facilities, but have terrible safety precautions. The Silage gym is a rock climbing course with no harnesses, and the Shalor gym is a skate park with no helmets. The gym trainers wear helmets, but they don't require you to. Both of these gyms, if you make one wrong mistake, you're gonna get hurt pretty bad. Next, we have the gyms ranked at level six. These are gyms with about the same injury chance as level five, but these ones are the first ones to have a real chance of death. The previous gyms I've mentioned might have been able to kill you. Like, yeah, you could drown in the Cerulean gym for sure, but either the chances were so small they were negligible, or I wasn't totally sure they could actually kill you. These gyms, I know they could kill you. It's a small chance, but it does still exist. The Vermilion Gym in generations one and two was ranked a one because the gate was either not there or just a regular metal gate. In generations three onward, the gate is a pair of uncovered electrical beams that would do serious damage if they shocked you. You are not required to get close to them to complete the puzzle though, unlike other unprotected electrical bolts. The Sutopolis Gym makes you walk across literal thin ice, and if you fail, you fall down to the basement. It's unclear how far the fall is, but the basement has three levels, the latest one being the highest, meaning falling in the first segment would be the worst fall. You would likely break some bones from falling that far, and maybe die if you hit your head or neck wrong. Finally for the sixes is the Nimbasa Gym from Black and White. It's a bunch of roller coasters, but there's no visible seat belt inside the coaster cars. That means you're gonna be jostled around like the beans inside some maracas. And do you think beans inside maracas are having a good time? I would not be happy if I was a maraca bean. Next are the ones I ranked seven. These have about the same chance of death as the sixes, but the injuries you could receive are more severe, potentially life-threatening. The Snow Point Gym is an ice puzzle, which as I've already stated is dangerous by nature. However, this one not only has slopes, which would make you travel faster, but you're also required to break through giant snowballs with your body. The game makes it seem like hitting these snowballs would be like flying through some freshly fallen light powder, but no. Have you ever built a snowman? Do you know how densely packed the snow has to be in order for it to hold its shape like that? Imagine crashing in to a solid mass of snow as tall as you at high speed because you slid down a slope. It'd be like hitting drywall. You're required to injure yourself to make it through this puzzle, which is messed up, Candace, and you're not even spelling your name right. What's wrong with you? It's, I know it's a pun, but no Candace spells their name like that. The Sunny Shore Gym has some exposed electrical beams like I mentioned before, but it also has a ton of open machinery you could fall into seemingly relatively easily. If you are working near active machinery, don't stick your hands in there. And also if you have long hair, tie it up. Seriously, I learned that in my mechanical engineering lab, heard some really unpleasant stories. 
Ugh. The black and white Castelia gym seems harmless. It's just several honeycomb shaped rooms, some of which require you pushing your way through walls of honey to access. It seems relatively mundane, but what if you get stuck in that sticky honey? What if you get stuck with your head not all the way through? Do you really think the clown staff is gonna be able to get you unstuck in time for you to not suffocate? No, in summary, don't trust clowns and save the damn bees. Finally for the sevens is the Santaloon gym. I'm putting this gym up higher than a lot of other fall risk gyms because while I'm not sure the fall would kill you, the fall is virtually guaranteed. You're walking on tight ropes. Next are the ones ranked eight. These have a high chance to seriously hurt you and a moderate chance to kill you. The Mauville Gym in Gen 3 has exposed electrical bolts that you have to walk right next to, meaning getting just slightly too close would give you a shock that could very well kill you. Also, these bolts change direction and where they are. If someone else steps on a switch while you're walking in between two of the metal poles, you're toast, literally. The Lava Ridge Gym, both in Gen 3 and Gen 6, is using either hot sand or hot water under enough pressure to launch you up an entire story. If the angle is wrong, you could hit the ceiling, but the material launching you could burn you as well. Combine that with having to drop down an entire story with no padded landing multiple times during the progression, and you've got a gym that would beat the crap out of you by the end. The Cantilave Gym is many stories high and has no guardrails on most of the ledges. Additionally, you have to ride fast moving horizontal platforms that come to immediate stops. With real world physics, that would make you keep going, falling on your face. You will get injured doing this and one wrong step could make you fall to your doom. Our penultimate level are the gyms ranked at nine. These are gyms that have a high chance of killing you, but your death is not 100% guaranteed. Most of these gyms, specifically the Violet, Black and White Drift Veil, Opelucid, and Snowbell gyms, require you to walk along very narrow pathways with no guardrails that are really high up. High enough up that falling would 100% kill you. You might not fall, but you probably will due to how narrow everything is. The Black 2 and White 2 Mistralton Gym features hurricane force winds that if you get caught in them, will send you hurtling into walls or through wooden crates. You might make it through without getting caught, but if you don't, you will be seriously injured and very possibly killed. Finally for level nine is the Asiris Gym. It's an ice puzzle, but what makes this one worse than the others are the ramps over tall pits. The pits look bottomless, but the zoomed out image of the gym shows you'll fall at least this far onto what looks like potentially just solid concrete. If you had just a slightly wrong angle on those ice ramps, which is highly likely, you would fall to your death. Finally are the tens. These are the gyms that are the most egregious of all. The gyms that I believe, if real world physics were applied, would be guaranteed to kill you if you went through the puzzle. There are only two of them. The first is the Blackthorn Gym, which has indoor open pools of lava? What? Obviously, if you fell into the lava, you would die, and that's a real risk. The Gen 2 version of the gym has no guardrails, and the Gen 4 has more guardrails, but there's still plenty of just open ledges that you could theoretically fall off. However, that's not even the main thing that would kill you. I believe that you would die without even having to fall into the lava because of the trapped heat. You can be in somewhat close proximity to lava without being hurt being able to get even closer with protective equipment. The heat radiating off the lava is dissipated enough before it gets to you. However, that's when the lava is outside. The heat is dissipated into the rest of the atmosphere. The lava in the Blackthorn Gym is inside, and where does the heat go? There's too many variables, and I don't know enough to try and do any calculations about this, but 
I do know that the fact that the lava never cools means that it's being replenished. Its heat stays. So that means it's constantly giving off heat that I don't think a regular building could vent out quickly enough, especially since we don't see any vents. Walking into the Blackthorn Gym would be like walking into a literal oven and you would be cooked just by standing there. If someone watching this video is an expert in lava and heat transfer and knows how to do some calculations to be 100% sure that it would kill you in there, definitely do those and tell me how it goes. But for the sake of this video, I'm very certain that just being in the Blackthorn Gym, even if you don't fall into the lava, would kill you. The final gym I'll go over, the other 10 ranked gym, is the black and white Mistralton gym. This one is sadistic. You are repeatedly fired out of cannons and your landing pad is just the metal ground. Progressing through this gym requires you to be launched out of cannons many times your body height into the air, then land on hard, unforgiving metal. The first launch will severely injure you, breaking multiple bones and very possibly killing you. If it doesn't kill you though, it doesn't matter because you do it again and again and again. The injuries would compound and completely destroy your body. And the icing on top? The penultimate cannon before Skyla literally fires you into a wall and then you fall down onto the ground afterward. It's like you're a half-cooked piece of spaghetti thrown against the refrigerator. There is no way you could get through all of these cannons without experiencing an extremely painful death. The moral of this story, if Pokemon gyms open up in the real world, stay the hell away from them. And also pick up a For Safety Porpoises shirt if you want one. Thanks so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.